I was recording and I didn't even know I was recording. Hey, Amber. <laughs> I'm playing with my new lipstick. Mm. Love it. So this is Juvia. Juvia. Oh God, I'm turning the wrong one. Juvia lipstick. I was in Ulta yesterday. Is it Ulta or is it Ultra? <laughs> What's the name of that store? Do you know? Ultra. Yeah. So I got my new lipstick, girl. <laughs> Waiting on Terry. What are you doing? Because you're looking pretty fabulous with your shades on. Thank you. I went to um, a friend's house for lunch, and I'm on my way back home, and it's a long drive. But I will, I stayed up late last night. We went to the drive-in theater and that moon was out and about. The strawberry moon. We watched the movie, well, we watched two movies. Uh, Under the moon, in the back of my truck, and it was amazing. Uh, I stayed up late and then I woke up at 10 30 and I'm like oh my god I had to get on the road oh wow it's late I haven't slept until 10 30 and like <laughs> oh. <laughs> I usually end up waking up and then going back to bed like eight o'clock the cat's in my face seven o'clock the cat's in my face and then I'm like I must have needed it though. I ate some edibles, so that might have had something to do with it. I was just out. <laughs> oh. That's was great. Nice, it was nice. So web design genius. I saw you revamp the whole site. Oh yeah. Who else is on here? It's Terry, but she's She's going to go get her, her lipstick and her makeup because I was showing off my makeup. <laughs> so she had to go get her makeup on. Uh-oh, uh you're supposed to do your arms all long. Like, oh my gosh. Oh, guys. like <laughs> Here I am. Here I am. I just threw on any old thing, you know? <laughs> Well, well, in case people don't remember, in case people don't remember, this is Amber Hudson. What's the name of your business? Amber, Amber Waves. Waves is web design genius. So we're jumping on here. Oh my gosh, she's taking swigs of whiskey while she's driving. No, I was kidding. <laughs> it's like she took a big swig. So we're just we're we're getting together. Because it's time for summer break. It's summertime. It's summer break. So, Terry, Amber, I want to hear more about what do you feel like you got done so far? And what is it you feel like you're not finished doing? Because you can look at the year as half empty or half full. I consider the year half full. So we still got a whole bunch of stuff to do. And I'll let I'll let Amber start because I don't know how much time you got. Um, I've really just been working with clients, but I really think I'm going to a, a music and arts festival, and I'll be camping and I'll be unplugged for a while. But I'm coming back, and I think I'm focusing on the mentorship finally. Mentorship. Uh, where I'm going to be teaching and web design and all that. So I'm excited about that. All right, for the heart based entrepreneurs. <laughs> and then a million other things other than that, but that being the big thing. Yeah, it's never a dull moment, right? Oh, yeah. I don't saw how people can say that they've been can be bored. So, but so far this year, you, you, 
How many classes did you put together this year? Because you did a lot of work this year. I don't know. Oh, gosh. I don't even know. <laughs> but I, I'm dissolving my bartending business after the, the rest of the contracts I have and opening for or her retreats and events and stuff like that. Getting the people together. Well, we missed you because it's been a long time since we got to wake up with you on a Tuesday morning and do Terry Tuesday, Tarot Terry Tuesdays. And I realized I had a numerology report recently, and it was basically like they were all like the numbers were all like attached. Uh, Attach. You know, like those people that have lifelong friends. Like I don't have a single friend that I, and I always used to like be jealous of that. But now that I realized it's in my design, <laughs> I was like, wow, that's no wonder I just like float in and out of like a lot. You know, I I'm a very social person. I know a lot of people, but it's just like I let go of time. Like, I could not see you, Erica, for two years and see you again and be like, hey, sister. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you, you still create the loving relationship, but it's like sometimes we, what we do is like we grab onto a friend group. I feel like people, it's hard to be friends with people sometimes because they want you to be like a Pokemon. You're their little pocket monster and they just keep you... <laughs> And they need you to be still. And so whenever they need you, they can pull you on out. And it's like, no, I don't really work like that. I can't go everywhere with you and be your sidekick because I have so many things that I have to go do, like things that I want to achieve and accomplish. And so it's like a fighting against stagnation because we can all be friends, but we can't get into routines as in these large groups and have these routines because it doesn't leave room for growth sometimes when we when we do that. So yeah, I totally get it. Freedom and variety is what I'm here to express. <laughs> All right. Are you saying this? You're saying it with power though. You're actually you're saying it with power. That's pretty awesome. Do it. I already knew that. I'm like, that's literally like what I've been about my whole life. Like I I don't have favorite colors. I don't have favorite anything. I love oh my God. I, I feel awesome. like that. I feel like that. But we're here to experience all the feelings and all the colors and all the things, you know? Totally. I totally can relate. I used to wear blue a lot, but it wasn't my favorite color. So I can build some routines and people say, what's your favorite song? What's your favorite actor? And it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Like, oh, like you don't get attached to, you don't get attached to it. Yeah. You asked me that. I just, I also, one thing I've learned about myself is like open-ended questions sometimes are like literally so hard for me to answer. Like I need like, be like purple or blue better, you know, like simple yes so like those questions I do well with and I've been trying to train my boyfriend on that <laughs> just for more peace because it drives him nuts and he doesn't understand it's like the way my brain works like don't make me feel bad about it <laughs> but, yeah so then a lot of times you ask what do you mean by that so like yeah you, you like I'm always experienced in my life what's your favorite color and like it's so hard to answer that because I want to give a truthful answer I guess that's what it is too I just want to be truthful and it's, it's not truthful if I tell you one color <laughs> I think I think that's why us as Libras get along with you too because that's why we get along with her as Libras right uh, yeah it, yeah, and it depends when it comes to colors, what day of the week is it? Because I can tell you one day is 
my favorite color is one color and another day it's another color and and just because i wear that particular color doesn't mean it's my favorite color it's just that i like to wear that color so yeah we we as soon as we define ourselves then we limit ourselves yeah and then my favorite color shirt might not be my favorite color lipstick <laughs> Say that again, Carrie. <laughs> I said, as soon as we, as soon as we say what we like, then we're limiting ourselves. As soon as we, because uh, we're, we're grounding ourselves into one thing, and then we limit, uh, we limit ourselves, and we're defined by what we've limited ourselves by. <laughs> That's the best thing I've heard all week. I think last year I said we have multiple personalities. So every morning I have to wake up and decide which one I am today. Am I the cheerleader? Am I Supergirl? Are you the goth today? Who, who are you today? So, you know, we, we can't get locked in. That's amazing. I want to hear what you guys have been doing. Oh, my God. Well... Terry, did you want me to go or you want to go? What you want to do? Um, ladies' choice. Oh, well, I, you know what? I, I know, Erica, you've got a whole plate full of stuff. So I'll go because my plate isn't quite as full as yours is. But I, you know, it's, it's uh, for me, I have been expanding my awareness in areas that, um, have presented themselves. And um, I've been doing a lot of stuff in the quantum field and um, working with uh, some of the um, uh, quantum number systems and, and stuff and doing meditations. And so it's opened up a whole different milieu for me because where I was three months ago, my understandings have shifted and they're more encompassing. And so that's why I say, you know, as soon as we start to define, then we're limiting ourselves. And as, as I'm expanding, it's like, oh, this whole quantum stuff is like, it's qu really quite amazing what, um, you know, like the power that we have um, when it comes to what am I going to how do I want to live this particular aspect of my life and going into that quantum field and selecting and, and moving into a specific area has really been phenomenal. Um, so I'm just exploring more and more of that. And um, it, it's, it's been quite, um, it's been quite eye opening. And so um, I, Personally, I want to do some more. Um, I'm going to teach some classes and stuff, but I feel at this point, I'm still at the, I'm still on that uphill climb up the mountain. So I can't see the perspective I want to present. So I'm still climbing a little bit. And so that is where I have been. Um, that's where I've been led and, and it's just amazing how uh, my higher self, my guidance is moving me into something that I had no, I mean, I had understandings about it, but it's like, well, guess what? You got to learn more, girl. <laughs> so here I am immersing my, my thought processes in there. And it, it's, um, it is, it's a, a real personal journey because it's, it's selecting what I want to create in my life. So um, yeah, that's where, that is where I'm headed. And as for the summer, well, I've got all kinds of interests coming. I've got a wedding coming up and I have a new love in my life. And so, so all of those things just sort of like, okay, plus it's just, it's, it's amazing. It's wonderful. It's a good time to be alive. So that's me. That's so nice, Terry. Thank you. Um, so you're gonna teach more classes. 
you're making a lot of space for love. Um, ooh, I'm excited. So you're going to your daughter's wedding. That's exciting. You're going through um, the, the changes of the dress rehearsals and all that. You, you all already had one of the dinners, but um, wow, it's amazing. So do, yes. are, you, are you feeling that you need to explain yourself? Are you feeling like, I don't have to explain myself? Are you feeling like, um, you know, this is it, this is me and take it or leave it? How, you know, I was asking another friend of mine, she was talking about her new love down in there on a trip to Hawaii and uh, doing all kinds of snorkeling and stuff. And I said, do you finally feel like you can just be 100% yourself right now? Um, I'm still, I, no. <laughs> Simple question, answer, no, because I'm just trying to figure out who is that 100% me, you know? So I, I'm still, I'm kind of surfing. I'm sort of going with the flow here. Um, you know, like there's big changes coming in my life. My, I, I only have a daughter, right? And so her marriage is, is a, a milestone for her and I and my relationship. I'm also starting a new love relationship. And so I'm trying to find a balance there. Plus I'm trying to find the balance about my spiritual and, and growth. So I'm, I'm sort of teetering between three things here and trying to balance it and like, okay, so who is Terry right now? You know, because we, we're always, we're always moving in and out of, of, of a flow and I'm always myself, but what part of me do I want to express now? And as I said, as, as relationships are changing, um, it, it's a time for reflection and I don't want to go back to the past, but I also have to bring to my present um, what that whole thing has brought me to at this point. So it's, um, it, it can, it, it's, I, I, it's not challenging in the sense of being a challenge. It's an amazing experience to go through. So it, I'm, I'm excited about it. it. That's amazing. So I just want to say like, here it is us as women, or just as people, let's just talk about the humans. Um, we have so many aspects of ourselves. So for me, um, last year, I was able to go to the Hathor Temple and she has more than one name. She has more than one aspect, right? We know Hathor um, as the cosmic mother, universal mother. Um, she's also can be seen as a cow. She can be seen as Sekhmet. And um, they have so many names for her. Like I can list some, the mistress of the gods, the beloved of the gods, the golden one, the lady of joy, the lady of life, the female son. And it's just like you're saying, what aspect of myself am I representing now? Whatever this, this newness is. So totally I can see it. I feel like even what, what you're saying and what Amber is saying, I've been afraid to commit to lots of things in life because I didn't want to be held down by the definition of these things, to be put in a box, to be labeled and to be judged as if someone knew the fullness of me just because they know one thing or a few things about me. So I totally, totally get that. Um, so last year, like I said, I was able to go to Egypt, but this year, six months in, I'm able to return. I feel like we laid a lot of groundwork and we built a lot of uh, content over the last six months or the, yeah, actually almost, almost a full year, maybe nine months of you and I together building content along with Jonathan and, and having a lot of people in that people know us now, they can decide like, hmm, I like her. And then we just, I just came from the conference, Journey to the Truth Con conference. That was amazing. So we, I got to see some of the people that like to watch us and who are friends of ours and to actually 
you know, the cool part is when people get to meet you and see like, oh, you're actually the same crazy person that we saw on YouTube. Like, <laughs> so you're really the same and, and they really see the essence of who you are. And then I got a chance to um, take my jewelry down there and some of my creations and be appreciated. And that was wonderful. So that was a wonderful thing. I also just got finished with a bachelor's in Sedona from Sedona with uh, a bachelor's in metaphysics and I'm waiting for my paperwork and I'm now ordained and I'm gonna be looking at all the rights that I can do like burial rights and hand fasting and marriages and things like that. So that's the cool, cool thing. Um, I believe, you know, I completed the oil priestess classes this year. So I, I was able to become a, a morifer or a temple priestess for the oil um, oil ceremonies and stuff like that. So that was cool. But I feel like, you know, once I went to this trip to the journey to the truth, truth con, people said, so what are you and what do you do? And I, I said, well, I hesitate to give you a definition of what I am right now, because at this point I'm still becoming And people say, who do you channel and what do you do? And, and it's like, you know, I and I think we also discussed teal, teal swan, that that thing where you become and you hit this plateau of what you become and now you are defined. But then also, um, who is it that you help and how? And we had some great conversations this year about how do you help people? Because I we don't want to become someone's icon as teachers and healers. What we actually want to do is become not the source, but a source, right, of, of help, a source of nurturing, but a source that helps a person to grow and move on to their own things where they become, maybe you don't have the confidence right now, or maybe the knowledge but then after we impart a certain knowledge and confidence in you that you go on to do magical, miraculous things on your own. And I'm seeing how we are, we're not trying to make disciples or make followers, just that we are like more of the Jesus aspect where he says, go, you know, once he helps the person, he doesn't necessarily tell them to go follow me to the edges of the earth. What he says is go, go and do good, you know, go spread this message or go, go share with other people. So I feel like that that's something that we had to learn this year, but it's something I definitely wanted to learn for myself before I go and become. So here it is now I'm going to, Egypt for a whole month and I'm going to get to go to Sinai and I'm going to get to go back to the Nile and Luxor and and uh, Cairo to visit the Sphinx and but I really am interested in who exactly is Hathor because she has all these names but uh, what is she is she from the Pleiades is she a Syrian because she's the star of Sirius right and she's you know, also considered to be one of the uh, seven sisters of the Pleiades as well uh, in some cultures, but she has so many names and I want to understand like what, what is she and what is her role? Uh, why was she so angry that she wanted to kill the humans, but then it, you know, it says like Ross sent her down to actually destroy, but then wanted to limit how much she destroyed. So I, I want to know more about the, the uh, mysteries of her. I want to understand more about her was she a tantric goddess? Because she's all about love and and uh, and and passionate love. But then also, when you go to the temple of Dendora, uh, a lot of it is about reproduction and helping the woman heal their wounds and helping the man with reproduction. So, what what are her aspects when it comes to love and sex and pleasure? Because she seems to be a pretty hot woman that's about some pleasure. So I, I get to learn about that. Um, later on for the rest of the year, I feel uh, I'll be working towards writing a book or two. Um, one will come from my thesis and dissertation as I finish up with Sedona, 
but then also my partner in uh, Egypt is, we're gonna write about this experience that I had over the summer. And I believe that as a person, I know that I am an oracle, but I also know that I'm a channel and I believe that I'm going to learn more and connect with Hathor to be able to channel uh, messages from Hathor. And I believe this is what I'm supposed to do. There's a lot that I'm supposed to do. And I feel like uh, even understanding our DNA that I'm supposed to do some special things over there. So I'm really looking forward to surprising people with that. All right. Hey, I have something to say. Say it, baby. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you ladies on what you plan on doing. I know Terry, you with teaching modalities or channeling or whatever you want to teach and you with your uh, journey to Egypt and what you hope to accomplish. I have a question about it. And my question is what if it happened? What would you do if it happened? And what you decided to go there to do, what would you do if it happened? Just kind of like what would you do if you get what you want what would you do if it all works out as planned i think i will supernova <laughs> i think i will become a star i've been a star before so i don't have a problem becoming a star again so i feel like i will supernova I feel like i'm moving towards being more of a planetary being than just someone who lives in Florida. I feel like my footprint will spread and that I will go and travel even more. You know what I'm saying? And so as I'm able to learn in Egypt, I feel like I'll be able to go and learn in Ireland and Scotland and Peru and other places. And I will be connected more because what I'm doing is showing myself that I can go anywhere and do anything and be anything and I'm becoming limitless. And so this is it. I'm proving to myself that I'm limitless. I'm doing the things that I'm inspired to do and proving to myself that anything is possible. What about you, Terry? I want to hear it. <laughs> yeah, you want to hear, I, I'm, I'm having a hard time hearing you. Um, so you have a lot of plans yeah and they're beautiful plans what will you do if they actually work as planned if everything goes as you plan in your mind what will you do with that you know right now it is, um, my plans are in the cooking stages. Like I've got the ingredients and I'm not, I've, I've, I'm setting all the ingredients up in, in, my, in my place. And it's like, okay, I've got this and I've got this and I've got this. What am I going to create with it? And I feel that there's a mystery yet, that the universe is still providing me a mystery. So I can't really say what exactly I'm cooking because, you know, I might be making a pasta sauce, but well, maybe it's going to turn into something else. I don't know, because there's a lot of there's a lot of things for me that are just not quite tangible. And so I suppose um, because I'm working with the quantum field, I have to be, um, I'm open to what is, what is it that I'm creating um, for the future, that what I do right now, I'm, I'm setting the groundwork, I'm setting the foundation. And I know that it's going to lead to something, but I'm not sure what the final, what it's going to be. So I think for me, I'm still on that 
discovery path that there's there's more that I'm going to see that I that I need to bring in before I can say this is exactly what I'm going to do because I see possibilities and it's like hmm okay that might be a possibility and it's something that I hadn't even thought about so I'm <laughs> I'm not I'm I'm being elusive but that's I can't give you a tangible answer right now what what isn't what is not tangible that you're referring to there's there's new possibilities of um because I, you know what if i change my location where i live there's different possibilities that would open up than what if i stay here and so i haven't got the answer to that question yet because i may decide to to change my living location. If that happens, then things will change, right? I think I know the secret. <laughs> it sounds like Terry's saying, I don't know, I might get married, I might move, I might quit my job and run away. I might, <laughs> that's what it sounds like. <laughs> I'm not gonna oh. run away, and I don't. I don't know that, but I, <laughs> but I might. You know, if it if the opportunity arises then i'll go for it she's ready she's out there <laughs> you really put me on the spot there amber <laughs> and thank you erica for just like what okay <laughs> i'll pull that baby out i just i'm i'll always be there with those kind of questions per, pulling it out <laughs> yeah, you really have a perspective of things i like it it may have not been ready to be pulled out, but damn, it's coming out anyway. <laughs> it's coming out. Well, that, that's usually how babies work. They come whether you whether you're ready or not. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. That's amazing. So Terry, um, maybe you will grace us with some cards. I can certainly do that. Oh, damn. I feel like I feel like we should have beach balls. Actually, okay. I think we need to find the map because the map is going to tell us something about these next, let's say these next uh, over the summer months, right? Because we've got, you know, we'll, we'll wait until September, but you know, like what is, what is it for just all of us now, you know, we're into the summer and it's going to be a hot summer and um it's gonna be a real hot summer y'all <laughs> <laughs> so with this hot summer where is what are we going to be looking for the map is going to show us oh we got the wizard of awareness Ooh. so in other words it's the number three and he is um your soul knows best be still and observe so we just need to be aware of what's happening around us and i think if we look at um he's got three circles right and it those are those they they loop into each other and um it's just that you know, as we become aware of things, then the opportunities are going to be around the corner for us. But we just have to be vigilant in in uh, observing what we see around us. And um, so, the sacred traveler. This is the one by Denise Lynn, the sacred traveler. The sacred traveler is going to tell us on this journey through our awareness over these next months. I'm going to select three cards. Oh, no, I'm selecting four cards. Okay. So the first one is watching the clouds. Lie back, rest, and relax. Sounds like a lazy day of summer but watching the clouds. And what do we see when we, when we look in the clouds, they give us 
they open up our imagination. It get, it they take us when we sit back and relax, we do that daydreaming and we go into that space of we go into a quantum space. What is it that we're going to imagine? Sometimes you get answers by looking up at the sky, by just contemplating um, what is it I'm seeing? What am I feeling? So uh, watching the clouds is an omen that we need to just take that extra time to um, see what's available to us. And the second card we get is answering the call. And it's the time is now. So when, when we see these things, it's time to do it. You know, like we can sit and we can contemplate, but when we know, we know, and then you just go for it. So I believe that this time is, you know, you're going to get that calling and it's like, I'll know what I need to know. And so perhaps we're at a point where we're just on that precipice and it's like, there's possibilities, but I'll know when I know. And, and I believe that, that we're getting that, those opportunities are gonna come. And the third card is reaching your destination. Your light is shining brightly. So, wow, isn't that amazing? You're going to answer your call and you're going to reach your destination. And so it's, it's just like, wow, <laughs> we, don't, we don't have to think about it. You know what? Well, we do have to think about it. We're going to watch. We're going to be aware. We're going to answer the call and we're going to reach our destination. So it's just a matter of putting that putting ourselves into it, whatever it is that we're going to do, we're going to become aware of it. We put ourselves into it and we're going to reach that destination. And the final card is you're protected by angels and you are cherished by the angels. So whether we look at it as the angels, as our higher guides, as our higher self, we have the support of the ethereal realm that's going to make sure that we are are focused and and we achieve what it is we set out to do so what an amazing <laughs> amazing set of cards for for the next three months four months over the summer i feel like those were perfect for me i feel like it was just like a repeat of exactly that don't worry follow your guides go for it do it you're protected um yeah, yeah. destination awaits you know yeah. we're both yeah, just like wow what amazing cards yeah. reaching your destination your light is shining brightly wow that's so cool i'll um i'll, I'll uh, take a copy of i'll take a picture of that and send it over uh -uh. So yeah, because that, that destination applies to you as well. All I right. Have, and I think it applies to all of us. Yeah. Even everybody who's listening, you know, this is, this is um, just, you know, sometimes we say, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. But I think all we need to do is just center ourselves. Look for the signs. Watching the clouds is like look look for the signs. They're all around us. We just need to take the time to um, go inside and focus on it, and just you know just discover that because the answer the, it, and and then you'll just answer the call. The time is now. It's not it's not some time in the future. Like do it right now. You know, you, you know what it is you need to do and, you, and um, you're going to reach your destination because you're, you've got the, you're protected. There's the yearning and we kind of ignore the yearning because we get the things of, I want to live here. I want to go here. I want to be here. I want this. And so the, there's those little things because I think last year is when I could really, I've been trying to not say what I want because I was wanted to be sure what I want until it just burst out of me. Like I want 
Like I want a special relationship. I want to move. I want to travel. I want to. And so, you know, when you're saying your destiny or your uh, what you should do, we should be doing more of what we want. And I know uh, for this trip, I don't feel like I've been working really hard the last few months. And what I really want is to sit on a porch and look at the sky is what I've been saying. Like, I want to sit somewhere and just be, and I want to go to Egypt. I don't want to be moving around like every day. What I want is to soak up energy. I want to let go of the computer. I want to let go of the phone and I want to sit and be and enjoy the place that I am and be in awe of creation. I really want to be in awe of creation. And uh, my neighbor called me this morning and he was just talking about gratitude or appreciation. And I was just telling him how I, I look out at the sky sometimes and I think about a thousand years ago, our ancestors were looking out at the same stars. You ever go to the beach and think, you know, a thousand years ago, somebody came up to this beach and they were like, this was their first time here in America or, you know, wherever you are and think our ancestors were here. When I go through North Carolina mountains, I'm like, I look at the rocks. Even uh, we were out in St. Louis and out in Illinois for the Journey to the Truth Con. And I thought somebody got dynamite and blasted through this mountain so that they can build a road and just be in awe of some of the man-made, but definitely of God's creation, of the animals, the people that existed here that we don't even know. We don't know what they look like and we can't speak their language. And you know some of the information we know, but there's so much that we don't know, and it's just amazing. You know, my appreciate I appreciate creation sometimes, and it's just phenomenal. Yeah, stuff I, I we just, don't know, but stuff we sometimes can feel. Places, you know. And yeah, again, that's what I that's what I think about. Like, how many like occurrences in history of and different generations and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and I, I just wanted to just add with regard to the reading here. Um, sometimes we have to step aside from all of the people and the chatter around us and connect with our heart and like, where am I? Who am I? Where am I going? And not listen to everybody else's interjection. I think you should do this. I think you should do that. Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? It's like none of that matters because ultimately the only person that you are responsible for is yourself. And with ourselves, what is going to bring me joy? What is going to bring me happiness? What is going to bring me fulfillment? And you know what, doesn't matter what anybody else says because what brings them joy is not necessarily what brings you joy. And what we are grateful for is not what they're grateful for. So we have to just stand in our own essence, in our own space and say, this is who I am. And this is what I'm going to create for my life because everybody's life is different. And, you know, we can't please everybody. So we might as well just please ourselves. And that's it. You're, you're mooted. Erica. Oh, I was going to say totally because, you know, with your parents and your family or people you date, people always say like, oh, I did this for you. And they, they talk about the things that they haven't done because of you. And. Oh, I don't know how much of it did, did I did any of that come across? Oh, OK. So I knew I didn't want to live that kind of life. And at one point I saw this movie and the girl said this, the world is just a place for us to just 
F up in. And, you know, like basically like this is a practicing ground. You know what I mean? Like this is a place if you're going to make the mistakes is here's where you make them. And I thought to myself, like, yeah, you're right. This is my life. And if I'm going to mess it up, better it be that I do it for myself than for me to claim to be a martyr that I gave up everything for everybody else. So not only are you martyred, you're not appreciated and you're unfulfilled. I'm not asking anybody to do that for me and I'm not going to do it for anybody else. I want to have fulfillment. And so that's when I decided, I guess people were asking me a lot lately, like, when did you go in the army? I did not go until I was 28 years old because my parents didn't want me to go at first. And then the person I was dating didn't want me to go. And then finally about 28, 29, I said, you know what? This is my life. I know everyone thinks it's a mistake, but I also feel like even with injuries and whatnot is the best decision I made in my life because it was my decision. And I got to go to Europe and do all these things that I never would have done. So I'm grateful. So I encourage people to break out, break out of the shell of the daily, what you're doing and find ways to to accomplish things and don't put money as the reason why you can't do things, you know, put a date on the calendar and maybe you might miss the date, but number one, put a date on the calendar, talk to whoever you need to get to talk to, get advice or talk to a travel agent, talk to a real estate agent, whatever it is that you're trying to do, find out, find an expert that knows how to get it done and make a plan and the the chips will line up. The money will come. If not the, the exactly how you plan, it's going to be something It's going to lead you to where you need to be. So take a charge. If you haven't gotten a plan yet, it's summertime. Now's the time to like do that. Take in some sun and take some time to think about what is it that you really want out of this life. The last thing that you want to do, yes, Take in some sun and some energy. The last thing that you want to do, um, they had this quote. It says, most people tiptoe quietly to the grave. You don't want to make noise. Don't want to make, you know, don't want to inconvenience anybody. Don't want to impose. Well, it's time for you to take your life in your hands and go for it. You got six months left to put a dent in this year. Or is I guess you would consider it still seven, right? Six and some change. Get off your butt you know, and go out there and and do some things that make you happy, make some smiles and some memories. And my neighbor, he was talking about that as well. Ah, it's crazy. So Amber just passed by a graveyard right when I'm saying that. Like, so get out of the graveyard. (laughs) You better live, 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 you know, live 100%, you know. And a lot of times we're reading about things, but we're not going to do it. And so sometimes we're like information hogs. Don't you feel like an information hog lately? And so, yeah, instead of just reading about things and watching videos about things, get out there and experience this. This is not a, you know, total recall where you're going to boot up the memories and stuff like that. You got to go out there and make the memories and, you know, and come back and tell me about it because I want to know anyway, because maybe you might see something cool that I want to do. So. But I know you might want to speak on that just because we're overloaded and I feel like I'm overloaded. I learned a lot this year, but I'm actually at a point where I could learn about this subject, this subject and this subject. There's really to the point where there's some stuff I want to know about this and learn about these different categories. And it's so much that I didn't even know where to start. So I said, okay, I'm going to do nothing. And it's okay to do nothing until you figure out, okay, maybe you maybe you're at this point of burnout. You know, maybe you're 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 overwhelmed with information and, and not really taking in any experiences. So I'm, I'm ready to take in some experiences and cut down because I couldn't even watch all the videos I wanted to watch. I was like, okay, just calm down and don't watch a video. Watch something funny, make yourself laugh and it's okay to live on this planet, you know? Sounds like Sagittarius energy creeping in. Yeah, right. Like that fun, free, like experience life, kind of experience the magic of life energy. Yeah, 
I, I think too, I don't know if the knowing of everything, maybe that's a way of us being triggered, feeling like we don't have enough time. Cause you don't have enough time to breathe. You don't have enough time to take a hot bath. Like you don't even want to take a hot bath cause you're like, well, I could be watching this video and I could be doing this. So you want to take a shower cause you got to do everything fast, you know? Didn't we just have a full moon in Sagittarius? Last night. Oh Last my God. <laughs> so yeah, it's still peak energy right now for us. Yeah, that's amazing. And, well, and it's that fire energy, right? Well, I'm loving the cards that you read. And it's 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 summer break, y'all. School's out for summer. Maybe that's it. School's out for summer. <laughs> and also when we when we talk about it with each other, we like help each other co-create our experiences. Even though we're experiencing them individually, we're us three just here and whoever watches is co-creating their life, but our lives collectively as well. So it's, um, you know, the, the word is everything. Just saying it. Mm -hmm. I was just listening to this podcast about communicating with your spirit guides and I am manifesting that right now. And I know I'm very close. I can feel it. And uh, I know I know I already communicate with them, actually. I already c communicate with them, but taking it to the next level. And something I didn't know, and I know this is only one perspective of someone, is uh, some spirit guides are, um, they can be, sometimes they're angels, sometimes they're ETs, like other beings. And sometimes they're like uh, more evolved humans. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was an interesting perspective because they still, the human guides have the ego still. So they're a little bit more stern with you than as a, like an angelic presence would be, you know, um, mm -hmm. the angelic light. And, um, I don't know. What, what are your perspectives on that? Well, I'm, I'm curious. <laughs> I, I would like to pipe in here because i believe this is this is my take on it is that those spirit guys that we we do have other ones but a lot of times it's our higher self and so our higher self is going to show itself in an aspect that we can relate to. So as we grow and as we evolve, then all of a sudden they're in a higher state. But we we have to remember we are connected with source all the time. So depending on where we are with our awakening, the guides may seem like, oh, my guides have changed. No, you've changed. And so your awareness is opening up to a more expanded aspect of your guidance so we can say oh i have i have i have a um, a buffalo and and that's a wonderful spirit guide oh but i also have an et and oh i also have an angel but those are different aspects of our higher self coming into us helping us in our evolution to be more connected with source like we're always connected but they're there to help and guide us to open up to more of that understanding so they're always there and it's just what we're ready and opening up to more that's my that's my that's, take on it that's really interesting because she was talking about the names you know and how we basically attach the names they probably don't really even have names that we just, <laughs> our brains need something to attach to or comprehend. That's the 3D part of us. That's an interesting point because, you know, like what we are collectively, we're all soul fractals of a source. And that's a really interesting way of looking at it. Yeah. Fractals of the source. Yeah. And, and then I was going to say, sometimes when you said ego, it immediately made me think of the ancestors, your ancestors, because your ancestors can drive you, but it's going to be based sometimes based on um, what they think is right. 
And so you might ask for guidance or help specifically on topics like the one ancestor may be good at something financial, but maybe they not, not, you don't really want that one in your love life because they got old fashioned values of what you feel for yourself. So it's determining. And then too, a lot of people want to channel and you're, you're channeling, but maybe you feel the urgency, the push and can't, can't rest because they're constantly asking you to do things. But then you always always have to remember that you're in the driver's seat and it's your existence. So you might need to put some some of these voices that you have on pause when you're dealing with what drives you. But really, I, I mean, I just really enjoy the fact like getting to understand yourself and separating these voices and filter understanding who is you. What voice is really you? What what really will make you happy doing this thing? Is it something that you're choosing to do or are you being driven by an outside source to connect to a thing? But or is it something that is fulfilling if it connects with you and you're like, okay, I I I do want to connect with that. And so just making these choices on a daily basis of who you want to become and what it is you want to do and how you want to spend your time. Honestly, evaluating, evaluating and being very much aware, self-aware. Yeah, I was going to ask, like, how do you guys discern between your thoughts and an external source? <laughs> Negative pestering yeah. stuff, I like to toss that one out immediately. <laughs> You know what? If you go to your heart and go into that heart space, then you're connecting at the heart space. You're connecting with your, with your higher being, with your higher self. And then, you know, if it resonates at the heart, then you know that is coming from the source that you can trust because and this is the thing is when people channel, you can have all kinds of entities coming at you and they can say that they're anyone from uh, Jesus to John Lennon, but, but you don't know who they are. If you're in your heart, in your space, in your heart, you're connecting with your higher self and then you ask your higher self to have a, com a, com uh, a conversation with that being and see where that information comes. Because at that point, that if that is not a true source, they're going to, they're going to be, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Your higher self is very powerful and those other energies are gonna not be able to withstand that, that energy. It's true. It's really interesting, uh, Terry. I, w I actually wanted to share this with you. I'm glad you brought up channeling, because um, Alshiana Dean was talking about her perspective on. She's like, um, she's not really all about channeling, especially if you are new to that to communicating with the spirit realm, and. Um, it was interesting to hear her say that she wasn't um, really into um, teaching people how to channel, which I think it's a tool for people that are definitely more experienced and you shouldn't, I don't know. But. I, I believe that all channeling comes through your higher self. And so that the actually any channeling that you do, you should be with your higher self. Yes, that's what yourself. I was trying to say. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and and that and that um, and I, I'm familiar with what you said with uh, uh, Shiana, but but I, that's where I've been coming from for the last several <laughs> years is that you don't know who is out there wanting to communicate, and they can tell you, and, and unless you vet it, you don't know who you're talking to. But if you are centered in yourself, connected to your higher self, then you can trust that information. 
Right. You, you said it so well, Terry. Thank yeah. you. That's exactly what I was trying to say. <laughs> Identify yourself. Source, source, you cannot, you know, from the seventh plane. Yeah. Source. Your, source, your source is, yeah. is you know, as long, if you're connecting with your source, then other energies are not going to be able to interfere with the right information because you're protected. Funny how they have that clear channel communication. Ha <laughs> ha. Isn't that funny? That clear mind. The clear mind. Exactly. I think yeah. that's what they call the radio station clear channel communication or something. The right frequency. Yeah. We're tuned into the frequency. Yeah. What, some power hitter questions. What? I said, you got some power hitter questions. <laughs> I always do. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you save, you save it and then you be like bam bam <laughs> saving this for us oh wow i'm so flattered you ever want to go deep just invite amber on <laughs> i ask all the questions that like little kid like those deep questions that little kids uh, ask you know that like really stop you in your tracks and you're like what <laughs> that's what i feel like yeah <laughs> never that's, lose that yeah that's a good thing that's a good uh, yeah thing. the endless curiosity i i guess i'm just so grateful for that and not yeah. being bored I, I remember i used to get bored but i don't remember the last time i was bored but that's but that's the whole point right yeah if you keep asking these questions and you're constantly evolving as soon as you think not you, but as soon as you think you have yeah. the answers, then you're now stagnant. And so now you start to, you start to entropy, but as soon as you keep, but when you start asking the questions like, okay, well I've reached and it's like, okay, I've reached this plateau, but there's more, like the more you learn, the more there is to learn, you, you know, like, you know, nothing. And, and that's the whole part of our journey is discovering. And, you know, like you said, Erica, early about being in the cemetery and, and, you know, going to the grave, you know, without making too many waves, that's when you stop learning. If you have an inquisitive mind and you keep striving for more information, then then the universe is going to um, <laughs> answer your call and give you that more information. And even when you reach a destination, the destination is only part of that journey. You know, and we've talked about, uh, oh, we're going, we're on a road trip and we're heading to California. But once we get to California, what does that mean? Maybe we're going to set sail on a ship that's going to take us across the ocean or maybe we're going to step on an airplane and go somewhere else we don't know but you know we have we have we have a journey and we have destinations but those destinations may just be the the springboard to take us somewhere else and so we have to be open to what is being presented to us and not just hold on to just one thing so you know once you reach that destination there's more and explore that for sure well ladies this was a brief update for the channel i hope i get to see you um, over the summer break amber and the, terry because we know um, Amber is like a balloon now. We know we can't hold her down. <laughs> <laughs> but you get work done, boy. You get a lot of work done. So I think it's amazing. It's Watching James Rankin, me. Uh, he just dropped like 10 videos since we came back from the conference. And I was like, oh my God, am I lazy? Oh my God. <laughs> but I'm like, oh my God. It's amazing because you, you're quantum, right? And you're you know, getting a lot of things done. And then you watch your friends and you're like, whoa, no wonder we're friends because we're all we're all just like dropping down so much, uh, just so much creativity. Like it's impressive to see the people, the people that we're around. It's amazing. 
I was just thinking about how like um just some local people I was talking to um and I, I was talking about you Terry actually and this woman wanted to meet you and I was like oh she was she lives in Canada and I had a couple things happen like that and it just reminded me like how cool like my you know my work gets to I get to meet all these different people and especially for what I do with the you know the web design and the brand strategy you know I just don't tell you how to build a website I get like we get to your core and like you what are your passions what's your long-term vision like what's your purpose like all that good stuff and when I start to ask those questions that people aren't used to being asked um it's just really beautiful to see why they started their business and why they got into uh why they decided to follow their passions because not everybody does they walk slowly to the grave like you said and just being able to meet you guys uh, you know 50 years ago this would have been impossible we 10 years food. ago 10 years ago it, it wasn't possible yeah <laughs> it's wow. and, wild. and and i'll tell you what some people at a certain age are like damn, I never thought I would be doing this because <laughs> I never even knew how to use a cell phone up until recently. No, I use a cell phone, but yeah. you know, like, it's like, okay, wow. I just followed a path that, you know what? There's a path in the road and it's like, here's the path that's more followed. Here's a trail. Where are you going? I'm going to go there. When I met you, had you ever done a YouTube before this? Yeah, never. <laughs> never. She's been on here. Every every time I say, boo, Terry, let's do this. She's like, okay. <laughs> like, <laughs> she's so flexible. But, and then life, that's what we have to do. Continue to be flexible. Continue to be, you know, challenging ourselves. So it's amazing. I love it. Sometimes I just leave it all on Terry. I'm like, it's your show today, Terry. Just do it. <laughs> yeah guess what that was that was always kind of a <laughs> challenging yeah it's nice it's well, fun any final thoughts I, I think we just hit the final thoughts that's it get off your butt go do some stuff y'all because I need somebody to come tell me all the exciting stuff that they did and I want you to tell me about your new boyfriends and fiancés and the the strange monuments you've been to and just the people that you've met. I, I love to have synchronicities. Every time people are like, let's hurry up. And I'm like, why? I love the unfolding. And, and every time somebody does a synchronicity like that, I'm talking about one thing and then you drive past it. On this last trip, I was, um, somebody asked me, Am I gonna, are you going to take your gun with you? And I was like, uh, I got a, a license, but I don't have one. And then while we were talking about it, I passed by the gun show sign. And I was like, well, maybe I need to reevaluate my thoughts on having it. Because I, I think out of fear, and I'm going to say too, those are another thing. Too. If anything is coming to you out of fear or um, fear, and what's the other thing? Lack. Wipe those on off the table. Wipe those on off the table. You don't need anything to do with fear or lack. This is an abundant life. You can make miracles happen. Um, source is bigger than all creation, right? If all of us are these little fractals of source, golly, there's 9 billion fractals on the planet and he can maintain all of this. So go out there and do magical, wonderful things. That's what I have to say. Summary. It's our birthright. Your birthright. Your birthright, you own this planet and walk like you own it, you know? Yeah. I feel so complete talking to you ladies. You're so wonderful. I, we miss you. We miss, I miss you too. That's why I showed up. You know what? Yeah. Okay, so yes. I was party. Party. I we need to have a slumber party. Yeah, and being more, I, I've been... Um, you know, said being more flexible and adapting, you know, I, I've been trying to be more adaptive in my social settings. Cause then I would like, 
I think just my past and us being online for so long, it's like, let's schedule this and like, let's plan everything and know when to expect it, everything. So I was getting a little lost in that, you know, that little uh, side of the spectrum. So it's just nice to like, now I've just been trying to not even think about it and like scheduling that coffee with that girl, like just doing the thing, like, I don't know, just taking more action, I guess. And not, you know, like old me would have, I already had something planned today. I would have said no to today, but I was like, no, I'm going to do today because I can do multiple things in one day. Oh yeah. <laughs> you know I what I mean? that too. And I, I like, I so enjoyed this conversation and I feel so good and yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm gonna stop the video. <laughs> All right, y'all. Thank you for tuning in with us. Have a wonderful summer, everyone. <laughs>